Today, we are going to go through the steps on how to find a good PC on Facebook Marketplace so you don't get ripped off and that you get your money's worth. I am by no means an expert on computers. I said in previous videos that I'm still learning and I'm still new to PCs, so just keep in mind this is just what I've learned so far. I have came up with four steps to help you guys find your next computer, and I hope they're helpful to some of you guys. The first step is to have a budget. With every purchase you make, you're going to have to know how much you're going to spend for it. Whether it's $100, $500, $1,000, you gotta know how much you're gonna spend. Me personally, I don't like spending a lot of money on computers and stuff, and I like reusing old parts that still have life. So when I'm looking for computers, I'm looking for computers in the range of like $50 to $200. And you have to know what you're gonna get. Like if you want a laptop, a gaming PC, a computer that you can just do schoolwork on, you gotta know what you're getting. Once you've chosen that, you'd be able to move on to the next step. Do your research. So we're over here on Facebook Marketplace, and we're gonna go look at some of these, some of these computers. And like I said, I like cheaper computers, but you have to know what you're getting into. It says i3, four gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive. You need to know more than just that base information. We don't know if that RAM is DDR3 or DDR4. That affects the speed and memory of each of the RAM sticks. Also with just them saying i3 CPU. I mean, that doesn't help at all. We don't know what kind of CPU it is. We don't know if it's an early i3, one of the later i3s, because there's different generations. Some people might look at this computer and be like, oh, 75 bucks, good deal. I mean, it's still gonna struggle to do basic things. I mean, if you look at it, i3, i5, i7, and now recently i9, you can see that's going up with performance. I mean, obviously, second generation i7s may not be as powerful as the latest i5 generation, but, you know, i5 and i7s are obviously going to be way better than just the i3s. If you look at this computer, you can see right here, these two slots, that's where the graphics card would be. That would be needed if you're wanting to play games, do video editing, stuff like that. Recently, graphics cards have been getting really expensive and really, they've been getting really powerful. So. I would recommend no matter what kind of computer you're getting to make sure it has a graphics card in it because that is going to help out in every scenario. Well, if we look at this, i3 7th gen processor, so it's a bit more detail. We still don't know exactly what kind of i3 it is. Eight gigabytes of memory. Like I said, we don't know if it's DDR3, DDR4. We have a hard drive. Preferably, you would want to look for a SSD instead of a hard drive. Faster download speeds and you'll get faster play speeds, you get faster read speeds, that's what it is. This is a good example of what a good listing should look like. Now this is a company here around where I live, so I mean it makes sense, but they show the inside of the PC and in the listing details, i5-6400, 8 gigabytes DDR4, a terabyte of hard drive, and so they have and they include everything if there's any issues and stuff like that. This one doesn't have an operating system. I can still message him, ask if, hey, can you show me that this computer boots up just to be safe? And if they don't, you probably shouldn't buy from them if they won't show you that the computer works. It doesn't seem that safe. Here's another one. It's from the same people. There's a graphics card. The good thing about these listings is that you can take this and then you can look up what it is. So this 545 has one and a half gigabytes and it's DDR3. But as you can see, and this shows you the recommended gaming resolutions, it shows you how it compares to other graphics cards. And this is where you want to look. So you want to look at these shading units. You want to make sure that this is a good number. Because there will be some where it will be 2 gigabytes of virtual RAM and there will be 50 shaders. And so it will just not run that good. Websites like this, this is tech power up. Websites like this will help you um, understand a bit better about each individual part. 12 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. So one, two, there's four sticks in there. So, so but my guess would be two four gigabyte sticks and two two gigabyte sticks, which is nice because for someone like me who likes collecting parts and inventory and stuff like that, I, am okay with having older parts that I can still use for a build for specific projects or sleeper builds or throwback builds or any type of thing like that. The third step is to make sure it works. Message the seller, make sure you know that the computer works. Because if you don't, like I said earlier, if the seller will not show you that the computer works, you should not buy that computer from them. Because there's a more likely chance there is something wrong with that computer. 
And if you see ones where it's like, oh, it's too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, you can look up the value of a lot of computer parts online. And I mean, even on Facebook Marketplace, you can get a good steal on stuff. I've seen there's a six gigabyte graphics card that's going for like $80 right now on my local Facebook Marketplace. And it's, it's crazy. Like you can get some really good deals on Facebook. You just gotta know what to look for, just what to look up. Some basic stuff would be check if your motherboard, check what type of RAM it supports, what's the maximum amount of RAM you can put onto it, what processors slash CPUs are supported on that motherboard. Do that with all the other parts, like look into your CPU slash processor and see if how many cores and how many threads it has, because that will help you determine how it's going to perform. And the last step is to just negotiate. It's Facebook Marketplace. Most of these listings have stuff to where it's or best offer. Uh, and most listings, they are not very firm on the price. Something else that you can do to know that you are getting the best value for your money is you can look up each individual part and see how much that part is selling for on eBay. Um, I would say Amazon, but those are uh, new ones and this would be used obviously, so eBay would probably be the best bet. And just see what ones have sold and see what the average price is and then add all that together. And if it's like a couple hundred dollars, I mean, once you're going bigger, once you're like getting a $500 PC, if it's a couple hundred dollars, I mean, you're getting a pretty good deal. But if you're getting like a $200 value in a $50 computer, I mean, you gotta snatch that up. Regardless of if it's going to be good, even if you resell that computer, you can take better photos, you can clean it up a bit more and you can reapply thermal paste. That's really simple. That was one of the first things I learned when I was doing PCs. It's just the little things like that that really helps with getting PCs. You can also look up what like average prices are for RAM, like DDR4 I know goes, obviously it goes for a bit more expensive. There's now DDR5 and DDR6 RAM. So if you're going for really like higher end gaming PC, I mean, used is definitely a good option. I wouldn't go for it completely used though. I mean, you may get a good deal, but the chances of something happening with that computer are higher. And so I would rather build a new PC with like, if I were to build a PC using used and new parts, I would build a PC with a new motherboard. I would use a used processor slash CPU. And then I would use used RAM. RAM's okay with used. Hard drives, or like I said, you would want SSDs preferably, or you can have both in it. I mean, I, I have both in my computer currently. One of them I use to store most of my files and all my stuff, and the other one I use to download games and play games and stuff like that. So it's pretty simple. But you also gotta remember that you can upgrade this. If this computer is less than what your budget is, then you can use that to buy other parts for it. So if it doesn't have an SSD, you can buy one. Or if you can switch out the RAM for better RAM, I mean, that's probably one of the easiest upgrades is if you could buy a computer that has eight gigabytes of RAM and then the motherboard allows 32, so you slap 32 in there, I mean, that's the best deal. It's little things like that. And with using these steps and this guide, I feel like it makes it a bit easier because this is everything that I've said is what just goes through my head when I'm looking at computers online for what I can buy and all that type of stuff because you know I'm I'm always wanting a good deal I'm always wanting to get new parts that I can do new stuff with and just learn but I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did hit the like button down below and subscribe thank you we are like right about to hit 250 subscribers and that is that is crazy I mean I I did not believe I'd be able to do that I mean I've had this YouTube channel since I was in fifth grade and it took me five years just to get my first 150 subscribers and the fact that I've gotten uh, almost 100 now and like we're like three or four away like it's that close like and I've gotten 100 subscribers in the past four months like that is insane thank you guys so much I'll catch you guys later thank you once again